evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to worship this evening. I'm Pastor Dale Salover, and on behalf of my husband, Pastor Peter Froelke, and the people of Prince of Peace and the House, door, house Next Door community, we especially want to extend a word of welcome to those of you joining us um, on our online community. We invite you, if you're comfortable, to say hello in the comments. Uh, tell us where you are coming from, where you are this evening, and also if there's any prayers that we can hold for you, not only tonight in this uh, time together, but throughout the Christmas season. The church has a long-standing tradition of gathering for this service of hope and healing. Some churches call it a blue Christmas, some call it a quiet Christmas, some congregations gather on the longest night of the year. I have to say this is really one of my favorite worship services and what I appreciate about this service, it gives us the space and permission to acknowledge that Christmas is not all fa la 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 las and ho ho ho's that Christmas can be challenging and it can even be downright painful. And so this service gives you and me space to name our laments, our fears, and our grief. But we do so in the context of hope. We do so in the context of hope. And so there's really three parts to our liturgy tonight. Uh, one, we gather to pray. Two, we gather to hear the good news that is the Christmas story. And three, we intentionally gather around the light of Christ, the light that shatters the darkness. I invite you to please join me as we begin our worship together with the opening acclamation. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes. I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because God has dealt bountifully with me. For you, O oh God, our souls in silence wait. Truly, Truly our hope is in, is in you. God of abundant mercy, you have given us grace to pray with one heart and one voice, even though our hearts are broken and our voices tremble with grief and sorrow. Comfort, comfort, O oh God, your holy people. Comfort all who sit in darkness, mourning beneath sorrow's load. Speak to us of the peace that awaits us, of the balm of healing for our weary and wounded souls. We ask all this in the name of our healer, Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. Our worship continues with song and prayer based on the O Antiphons. Singing the O Antiphons is an Advent tradition that dates back to the fifth century. Each of the seven O antiphons contains a name for the Messiah that is given by the prophet Isaiah. O wisdom, O Lord, O root of Jesse, O key of David, and so on. We are going to sing these O antiphons by singing the beloved Advent carol, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And we are also going to pray them using the words written by Pastor Nadia Boltz Weber. Please join me as we begin by singing verse 1 of carol number 257. Thank you. 
O come, O come, wisdom from on high. Send your wisdom and cast aside the sinfulness that comes from thinking only of ourselves, only of our own species, only of our own well-being, only of our own country, only of our own religion, only of our own historical moment. Amen. Come, O oh come, Lord. Come and again break open our hearts like only a baby can do. Come and again be born in straw and mud and show us God's preferential option for the ordinary, the small, the unnoticeable among us. Come and again show us what we always seem to forget, that the divine is so often concealed within the common. Amen. Come, O come, root of Jesse, our foundation. When in this time of year, families of origin are sometimes difficult to claim, remind us once again how we are grafted into the story of you and your people. Come and claim us as your own children, so that our belonging to you and to each other and to the saints who came before can be a more reliable and source of our identity. Amen. Come, O come, key of David, you who are the opener of prisons and hearts. Free us from the bondage of all the things we think we cannot live without. Comfort all who are incarcerated and be with their families who, in a way, are serving their own sentences. Break the chains of self-righteousness and self-interest and self-reliance and self-loathing and self-importance. Amen.
Oh, come, oh, come, morning star, shine on those who sit in the shadows. Hold in your eternal light the souls of those killed by another's hand. Come and dispel the darkness in our own hearts, especially when we start believing that one act of violence is somehow more powerful than every single act of love that happened on the same day. Amen. O come, King of the nations, you who created all that is and yet emptied yourself of power, come and show us again that we must lose our lives to find them. Heal the nations by bringing your unlikely kingdom of enemy love and cheek turning. May we who wield power over others fall on our knees and worship the King who was held in a cradle and on a cross. Amen. O come, O come, Emmanuel, who is as present in our loneliness as in our fellowship, as close in sorrow as in joy. Make your presence felt to all who face the holidays for the first time without someone they love, a child, a friend, a lover, a parent. Hold them especially close and just get them through it, Lord. Amen. People who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. 
for all the boots of the tramping warriors, and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. To the throne of David and his kingdom, he will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We read responsibly the writings from St. John of the Cross. Surely I know the spring that swiftly flows, even even during the night. That everlasting spring is deeply hidden, but surely I I know the place where it begins. Even Even during the night. I don't know its source, because it has none, but I know that all beginnings come from this one. Even Even during during the night. I do know that nothing can equal its beauty, and that from it both heaven and earth drink. Even Even during during the night. night. I know that there is no limit to its depth, and that no one can wade across its breadth. Even Even during the night. Its brightness is never clouded over. I know that from it all, I know that from it all light flows. Even during the night. I know its current is so forceful that it floods the nations, heaven and hell. Even during the night. The current that is born of this stream, I know, is powerful and strong. Even during the night. The living stream that I so desire, I see in the bread of life. Even during the night. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, The shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, 
glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. reminded as part of the Christmas story in the very beginning of John's Gospel that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. Tonight this is the light in which we gather, the light of Jesus. We light four candles tonight in remembrance of loved ones and for our own needs. We light one for our grief, one for our courage, one for our memories, and one for our love. The first candle represents our grief. We own the pain of losing a loved one, of dreams that go unfulfilled, of hopes that evaporate in despair. The second candle represents our courage. It symbolizes the courage to confront our sorrow, to comfort each other, to share our feelings honestly and openly with each other, and to dare to hope in the midst of pain. The third candle represents our memories. For the times we laughed together, cried together, were angry at each other or overjoyed with each other, we light this candle for the memories of caring and joy that we shared together. The fourth candle represents our love, the love we have given and the love we have received, the love that has gone unacknowledged and unfelt, and the love that has been shared in times of joy and sorrow.
If you feel so moved, you are invited to come forward to light one of the votive candles, symbolizing your burden, your grief, your sorrow, those things that make Christmas a blue time for you. And for those of you who are at home, I invite you to grab a candle and light it or turn a light on or just sit by your Christmas tree and take this moment to acknowledge those things that are on your heart this evening. In the center, we now light a fifth candle. It is a symbol of Emmanuel, God with us. We remember that Jesus Christ is always in the center of our lives and that he is the light of our lives, the light of the world. He hears our cries. He knows our hearts. He feels our pain. He has experienced our suffering. In the midst of our brokenness, Jesus promises us wholeness, hope, and healing. rise and please join me as together we confess our faith using the words of the Christmas Creed. I believe in Jesus Christ and in the beauty of the gospel begun in heaven. I believe in the one whose spirit glorified a little town and whose spirit still brings music to persons all over the world, in towns both large and small. I believe in the one for whom the crowded in find no room, and I confess that my heart still sometimes wants to exclude Christ from my life today. I believe in the one whom the rulers of the earth ignored, and the crowd could never understand. 
understand, whose life was among common people, whose welcome came from persons of hungry hearts. I believe in the one who proclaimed the love of God to be invincible. I believe in the one whose cradle was a mother's arms, whose modest home in Nazareth had love for its only wealth, who looked at persons and made them see what God's love saw. Who by love brought sinners back to purity and lifted human weakness up to meet the strength of God. I confess my everlasting need of God, the need of forgiveness for our selfishness and greed, the need of new life for empty souls, the need of love for hearts grown cold. I believe in God who gives us the best of God's self. I believe in Jesus, the Son of the living God, born in Bethlehem this night, for me and for the world. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In 82. blessing. Jesus is the word made flesh in our midst. May his incarnation fill your hearts with peace. 
Jesus, give us peace. Jesus is the promised Savior born of Mary. May his birth among us renew your hope. Jesus, give us hope. Jesus is the King of kings and Lord of lords. May the gift of his presence bring forth rejoicing. Jesus, give us joy. Almighty God, creator, redeemer, and comforter, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, Emmanuel. God is with you. Thanks be to God. Thank you.